Okay, and welcome to our uh, d, d game for today. We are on session number 69. And we are currently playing in the Blood Mists of Baldavia. Uh, doing a storyline dealing with vampires, more vampires and even more vampires. So, with everyone online today, we have uh, first up, uh, Jeremy. Good evening all. Yes, I'm good evening playing uh, Dimitri Dimitrov, a uh, wise man saying of humble origins coming from the land of Trollhara, which has been now known as Kavikos, having been overrun by Thyatin, uh, or Thyatin, because you cannot buy Thyatin. Um, and, but, despite such aggression, he's still willing to be uh, giving and willing to provide help and assistance and knowledge to all those around him. Also on tonight we have Mark. Who is also on okay. music. There he is. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. I had the honor of Okay. I'm playing Mark, um, the Roman auto weapon master, uh, Warhammer Smasher thrower, and quarterback with his sidekick Bruce. And we also have Martin. Oh, okay, um, I'm playing uh, a wood elf, um, uh, half of a Kenzai monk. So, um, a little bit of bow stuff, and a little bit of longsword stuff, um, and a lot of um, getting out of the way of stuff. That's about it. Okay, and then we have um, Stephen as well. Uh, I'm playing um, Sir Clovius, a uh, Griffin Knight rider, um, who uh, has recently been uh, partying a lot, apparently. <laughs> there are worse things that could happen. We also have a David who's currently um, dropped out of the call, so he'll pop back a little bit later. And... Uh, last session we had you decide to uh, quick travel to uh, the center of Baldavia so you could get right into the action and uh, then you uh, next thing you know you're waking up in the city center of Baldavia having um, taken their fast coach uh, and been uh, passing through all their checkpoints without having to deal with anything which is, which is nice, except for the fact that you were in suspended animation the entire time. Checking to see if that is... Okay, so, you are, um... Uh... Having, uh... Decided to head north to try to find, um, Baba Lasaga's hut. Or Moving Mountain, as the case may be. You have entered the blood mists surrounding that town of Ruinsgrad, which is the uh, center of um, people for Baldavia. And that is where we left off as you, each time you touch the mist, you make it light up in a glow with your um, life force. So you can actually tell when someone living is moving through the mist. So I believe uh, Jeremy had something he wanted to bring up to to Bradshaw. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it was just the sort of thing. Uh, uh, it's, uh, a, a pity if uh, if uh, David's not online to actually hear the explanation as well. But it was certainly when we left the end of the last session. Um, the we actually actually just left the small town and we got out on, into the. Uh, more open terrain, heading towards uh, the what was it? Um, was this uh, a wine uh, winery to the north? That's right. Yes, the the wine. There's the winery. There's the wine. Yep. Um, but 
seemingly Plowman and uh, Bradshaw felt that potentially Dimitri hadn't been treating Bradshaw well, particularly in the tavern that we were just at. So, while sitting around the campfire for the evening, uh, Dimitri will explain the situation that we're, we're currently in so that everyone can understand. And he'll use nice small words so that a literate Igdu Amai can also possibly understand. Uh, and, and do we need to name which ones that they represent? Oh, no, no, he wasn't naming anyone. He wasn't saying with anyone in the party would be an illiterate Igdu Amai, but if a literate Igdu Amai was listening, they would still understand. If, um, if Dimitri's talking, I get up and walk and go talk to Bruce. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not taking any notice of I don't want anything associated with Dimitri at the moment. I'm not caring. I'm going to go talk to Bruce. Well, Dimitri will just be able to talking loudly enough that you can still yeah. hear. I'll, I'll, okay. find some, I'll find some cotton wool to put in my ears and I'll just, if I keep it in, if it gets louder and louder, I'll just put some, something in my ears just to have the noise. Yeah. But uh, as he explains the fact that uh, like Plowman was concerned that Dimitri wasn't treating uh, uh, Bradshaw well enough, but then Dimitri would talk about the fact of, well, it was the idea of, Dimitri, of uh, Bradshaw being made a slave and being treated as a slave made a kettle alive in the same kind of way, or some, possibly an option that uh, if a dragon, if, if uh, Bradshaw was required to bring a, a baby dragon through the middle of Rockhold without being killed, or no, with the right, the right no. So, or for Plowman's experiences, the idea is that our colleague, rather than being a commander knight, was actually a Helvetic knight that he had to protect and bring through the, the land of Ethengar. <laughs> so, but then, uh, so, to help explain exactly where we are and the situation we're currently in, and of course, Taking note that Bradshaw's not listening, he'll also comment that he had told Bradshaw exactly what to expect in Gangster before we left and explained the situation to him, but it wouldn't be surprising if Bradshaw was here. Yeah. Um, um, it's more that anything Dimitri says Bradshaw kind of ignores as you're fully aware from previous history of the Bradshaw. Absolutely, so, Yeah, so, so okay, as, so a player, as a player, I understand 100% what you're doing. Oh, yeah, no, so. no, that's all good. <laughs> but yeah, so, so. But then the, uh, um, uh, they say, to then talk about exactly where we are right now and the potential danger that we're in, uh, Dimitri will talk about the fact that, yeah, okay, Babala Saga, we're supposed to go and find the heart of her mountain to retrieve the, uh, the Green Sea. I know Parliament doesn't believe in the tales of Baba Yaga, um, but Dimitri will explain, yeah, well, okay. Those tales that he was told as a child about Baba Yaga were untrue. They didn't want to frighten the kids too much by telling the real story of Baba Yaga and how dangerous it was. So they, they toned it all down a lot. But if you can imagine someone who is actually as powerful and what dangerous as Baba Yaga is, that's a real person and a real thing to think about. But it's okay, we don't need to deal with that person. Because we're going for her uh, older, uh, meaner, nastier, much more dangerous older sister, Barbara Lasaga. So we're all fine. <laughs> and and um, just to make things simpler, while we travel in this situation, while we're on this quest, we're currently travelling through the lands of countless Monstrad, who, for the last several centuries, has been. Uh, has killed so many brave Ethagarians that the roads that we're walking on are literally paved with their bones. Now, in the tavern, we met a gentleman who some may have thought looked a bit like me. That would be incorrect in the same sort of way that it's been known that Dimitri uh, looks like it, it looks like ha uh, the immortal Halev, and that Halev, uh, and the fact that Dimitri is descended from Halev. It would be more accurate to say that Krakatos doesn't look like Halev, 
that hell are good for a cracker toss. So it's cracker toss being around the hell a lot longer. And so the fact that we were actually in his, in, in his credits and the worst that happened to Plama and Dimitri was telling our life stories and the worst that happened to uh, poor, poor, poor little Bradshaw was sitting in a pool of ale and eating bugs is certainly not something Dimitri was vaguely concerned about because after all he's a dwarf and a dwarf probably eat bugs and snack while they're doing their kid in their minds anyway. So they are probably looking for it. <laughs> but, uh, say wow. That's not saying wow because I was trying to get about five times in that conversation. I'm just saying wow. Um, all I've got to let Martin know, just put away. If I do a long rest, a long rest at the moment, my shield's going to go to slashing resistance at the moment, for your reference. So, you need it? No. I recorded my hand, but I just let you know. But yeah, the most important thing about Dimitri's uh, rules being broken is that he explanation of the tale about what we're going through is uh, if, you, if you want to roll an extra check, anyone who's listening to it, roll an extra check. Uh, if anyone gets above 10, yes. what you'll really notice is the fact that Dimitri is far more scared, terrified of anything in the current situation than anything he's ever been in his life. Really? Like? Well, he was not saying that, but in fact he is absolutely, or the virtually scared witless at the present time. So, so actually, roll, yeah, we're actually roll 21, by the way, man, for your reference, so. Yep. I, I know you're scared, but I'm not going to say anything about it, so. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah,
Is that alright, Dan? Is that alright with that? That's fine with that. Okay. So that's right. Dimitri doesn't actually care what Flex will think of him either. No, no, no. This this love has gone long, long time. So absolutely. Yeah. So I think I think. I wonder about minutes. I think I started the first session we were together on after me. So, yeah, I was like, oh, another mage, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> Rachel, since he's outside the city and not inside the guards, I'll put all these. Rachel will put all these armor back on and do it inside the city. So. And I assume my. Was my arm on the on the goat, or was it actually my bag? I'll be mark. I can't remember what I said. I'm assuming it was on your goat at the time, so you could actually get to it if you needed it. Cool. So I'll just put all my the little chainmail. You know, I have the shield, the back, um, also the hammer. You know, um, and yeah. The, everything so. is um, covered in a um, um, thin film of liquid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll try. I, I, I'll try to wipe it off the kind of warhammer, the top of the warhammer, and see if they go back again. Or? Well, you are currently everywhere you're moving, you're breathing it in. Uh, you're in the blood mists. Yeah. So it is yeah. literally a mist made out of blood. So everything that touches it gets a thin film of blood on it. Well, no, Bradshaw doesn't mind. This is like, it's very warrior type kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of fine with it. And uh, for Jeremy's perspective, uh, what you saw walking through the town, mm -hmm. uh, you remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on. You remember that um, one of the things you know about that creature is anything within thirty feet of it um, takes damage, necrotic damage. Yeah, and again, that was actually coming up. I had been in my notes to actually uh, remind people that yes. The random, uh, the random watchmen of the town of this land are the sorts of things that bring nightmares to my, uh, the, the stiffest of bed. <laughs> Is there a defense against that necrotic damage? Uh, yes, high constitution. Don't get close. Okay, don't get close. Or immunity or to or, new, or immunity yeah. to necrotic damage. Or be a dwarf or resistant to be necrotic damage, one of the two, so. Be, be undead. I think what he's, he did, not, not Demetrius not saying kill yourself, but he would have recommended it in a different way. Yeah. Well, there's that, that is the question was asked exactly how do we avoid the damage effects of those? Yes, it will, it will, that's right. That would be, that yeah, would be undead. Yes. <laughs> Now, the undead are rather terrifying in this place. Because they say, it's the sort of thing that, yeah, Dimitri has been surprisingly forthcoming with information because he's scared bitless at the present time. <laughs> okay, I'll give Jeremy's character a history roll. Uh huh. Uh, 22. Okay, he does remember stories of the Red Mist when it was in Traldara. Okay. Most things that entered the Red Mist didn't come out again. Yep. Uh, or at least they didn't come yeah. out alive. <laughs> the, uh... Um... Well, that's... <laughs> When, when Bradshaw was making your show of having pulled out a piece of beef and buying it, getting the bottle over it, type stuff, and people are like, I said, yep, yep, yep. That's going to be one of the minor issues we face. The fact that, uh, yeah, generally, no one comes back out of this. But hey, consider what we're going towards, that's hard to be separate. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, because the. Yeah, so there was nothing to indicate the blood beast ever actually disappeared from this land, was it? Uh, it uh, never actually um, left this land. Yeah, that's what I mean. So it's not like we could wait it out and uh, move on at some other point. So. Not easily, no.
Okay. So what would you like to do? Um, I... Because you, you have no fire, yeah. you, you have um, uh, very little in the way of light sources because any magical light source, um, light goes away very quickly as it gets covered in the blood. Mm, I... Well, this really hurts very much, I will ask my master. Um, did you want me to use my room to fly up and around to check on things? Dimitri? Well, welcome to it. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. As far as Dimitri is concerned, no one else around at the moment, so he's not interested in looking after you in any way, shape, or form. He's not these masks are slaying you from there, as far as he's concerned. Okay. <laughs> oh, if, I, if, if I feel that he's not really, really interested at all, I'll just. I'll, all I said, I'll say, all I said, I'll stand and watch you guys don't have to sleep, that's all. Okay. Um, uh, I'll, I'll swap the plan but after a certain period of time if he's okay with it. I'm sure he says yes. So. Uh, okay. Dimitri is certainly going as part of our um, uh, resting options. Uh, I need to actually pull it up. So, uh, does someone need a long rest? Uh, so we're certainly coming here. If we're having a long rest at this point, the, uh, I mean, I don't know if you actually need it. But, um, no, I don't think, well, I guess, uh, I don't think, because no one's really casting any spells or anything since we had um, that's right, I suppose, our, our undead ride. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, certainly, the major would have encouraged a pause to, to, to explain to you the situation. Um, if people didn't need to actually stop long term, then we would definitely keep moving. Yes. Uh, um, and, and, and it sounds like, like there's no difference between night and day, so let's just back keep, up. keep going until we get tired. Okay. Yeah. Or, or find some form of shelter. Yeah, like a, a giant rock in order to roll it across a cavern okay so you start heading um north of the town so you can take the uh uh one of the fords across the river because uh oh. where you are the river itself is uh uh doesn't have a bridge across it yep Bring in the map up so you can actually see where you are better. Uh, um, um, this dwarf's not going to sing any hi ho hi ho's, Martin. You sure about that? I can't see anything wrong um, with that. No, no, no I think we had enough problems for the previous war. So, so a nice big map, map showing you where you are. And, and the, the fact, fact that you, you wanted, wanted to go to Kachesky. Kachesky, that's right. And you yeah. definitely want to try to avoid the Tower of Igorov because, well, you don't really want to stay there for a meal. <laughs> well, yes. That's where we were encouraged to go to find out more, where I'm sure that the, uh, the Lord of the Tower would be happy to have us at dinner guests. I know. It, was, it always came out with, he was happy to have you for dinner. Never said the word guest. Dimitri meant to do exactly the same way. <laughs> they would probably be more honest. <laughs> well, they always seem to leave the word guest off when they said when they mentioned dinner. Yep. Okay, so you do you were told that about eight miles north of town is a rapid set uh, you could probably use to cross the river. Yeah. Okay. And they recommend crossing out of Baldavia as quickly as possible. Though apparently you will be passing into contest contested lands. So that that's the red line on the left side of the river's bank. Yep. The the the, the red line represents the uh, specific domain of um, Baldavia, not the holdings of Baldavia. Right. Right. 
So, yeah, so Count, uh, Count von Strad still controls or oversees the areas of Palatinsk, Kutcheski, and Pavlova. It's just that, yeah, if you look at the sort of the, uh, the red line on the river, effectively means it's a sort of a state boundary within Moldavia, within Moldavian domain. Because crossing rivers is banned or whatever. Well, no, it just means you like anything. I suspect that what they really, when they said get out of Moldavia as soon as you could, what they really meant was don't go to a Kutcheski. Uh, south would get you out of Moldavia <laughs> controlled by Montserrat a lot more quickly. But Well, you have the, been uh, told that there is problems to the south. Yes. <laughs> so where that... Um, uh, road known as Scotch Breach is currently having a um, uh, fight over who has control over it. Yes. So you have the area of Clantyre, the Scotsman, fighting the um, um, Baldavians or the Transylvanians as the case may be. Yes. So Scots versus Transyl Scottish versus the Transylvanians. <laughs> Okay. Well, although uh, admittedly, that's only the that's only one of the many combats that Baldavia the, 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 the combative fronts that Baldavia is facing at the present time. So they they do say that um, coming from the Colossus Mountains uh, itself um, into the area to the south of Baldavia on this side um, comes the uh, Red Tooth and the Undead Dwarven Army. And coming from the um, north side um, over this section uh, is what they're calling the uh, undead army from Denegoth. Yep. And um, currently in the area between Rumensgrad and um, Palanstin is uh, uh, the undead um, army from Karamikos. They are basically um, uh, separated by the river because most vampires won't cross a moving river. Yeah. Frozen river is perfectly fine, but a moving river is not. And, and of course, as I said, that the uh, um, Kuteski is currently besieged by a couple other forces as well. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where we're going to try and get into. So near Kuchesky is um, Baba Lasaga. So, one of the besieging forces in Kuchesky. <laughs> is your plan to follow the river? Well, so, okay, the idea is to be like, yeah, heading northward. Cross that ford. The, uh, at least we'll have a look at what that similar put forward is, how it, like, if it looks uh, crossable. If, if necessary, we'll have to keep going north until the river, we find a spot where the river can be crossed, or even beyond the end of the tip. So. Okay, uh, one of the weird things you notice as you walk is uh, your footprints seem to uh, glow in the um, ground behind you for at least an hour after you've moved on. Of course they do. So. And uh, uh, you all seem to have a bit of a glow around you that you can easily see each other in the fog. Mm -hmm. Though seeing the ground, trees, signs, everything else is hazy. Seeing a living person seems to be quite clear. So you have trouble seeing signs at about 20 feet, but you can see any, each of your friends from about 100 feet away. And be aware that does not necessarily mean we'll see enemies from 100 feet away. That is true. 
as not only is there uh, something called the blood fog that you're in, uh, there is a uh, creature made up of um, bloody mist that inhabits it. And, and not Earth also, uh, a lot of creatures, particularly like undead creatures, won't be lit up by the mist. Uh, yeah, so the nature is definitely encouraging everyone to be alert. Extra vigilant. Vigilance, you say? Constant vigilance. <laughs> okay, so as you're traveling, I will get everyone to make a perception roll with disadvantage. Perception. <laughs> So just to highlight that I have the alertness feat, which means I can't be surprised while I'm conscious. Yep. <laughs> I didn't have to pay a of five, but anyway, I did. I'm um, total one, so. And I'm not seeing high data, okay? Okay. So D3 got 24. I got 10. How did Stephen go? I got a 22. A 22. So two of you are, are looking pretty well right now. Uh, you do notice that uh, your griffin looks uh, very miserable in the um, uh, mists. But he is not as bright as you are. <laughs> so you put out about two to three times the glow he does, even though he is bigger than you. If, if anyone questions it, the make sure you explain that, well, we have to carry the blood beast is recognizing the life force of individuals, and it's well, well known that sentient life forms have a much greater life essence than animals and beasts of burden. And he, he, he yeah. probably, <laughs> probably also notes down that um, uh, religious uh, people are um, brighter than non-religious people. So clerics and paladins generally shine out like a beacon. Mm -hmm. So you... Oh, that's okay. Because we all know the Korean Union is just a fighter. So... Which comes in handy. I'm actually... I'm, I'm actually... Okay. Anyway. Sorry, Kelly. Uh, nah, I'm all good. Again, Dimitri's bias is coming forward and he's created it. If I haven't created it, so... But yes, because technically you have got some power in the middle, haven't you? I'm excited that, you know, I'm actually now... Um, I, I found out you can... Um, be like a, a holy warlock, so now I'm like making him a holy warlock or something. Sounds about the same. That's a little more interesting. Well, if you are going to be a holy character, then uh, in comparison to you, um, so you know how I said that uh, the griffin was a lot duller than pe the other people were? Uh, mm -hmm. That would be the comparison of you to the others. Um, yeah. You are um, a shining beacon in the middle of the fog that you think you could quite easily see from a mile away. Yeah. As a player, Stephen, if you're going to change your character, and you want to play a, a holy warlock type character, you want to change a holy warlock character, I'd be tempted to wait until after this adventure. Oh no, I just mean that, that level we got, I was going to put it in palette and I hadn't added it to the character sheet, now I found out I was just looking through, like, making new characters, and then I'm like, oh, you can have a Celestial Warlock. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Like, be a friend of Unicorn or something. So I was like, all right, I think I might not change character and just play Clovius for a while longer. And, um, but yeah, he was going holy either way. So, so um, that means you are, a, different. You, you are a beacon in the blood. You do well, like, possibly, possibly not quite as bright as you could have been if you're only a level one 
holy key, holy does, doesn't class, matter. Just as take opposed one. to level eight holy class. Jeremy but just takes one level. Last, the party members for a cloak or something to cover himself up with. He's he's sort of uncomfortable with that being seen from far away. Uh, so. To put it in perspective for Jeremy and the rest of the party, one level is the same as 20 levels the way the blood uh, mist works. Yeah. So any level of holy oh, no. and you light up to be seen from a mile away or more by those who can, uh, by anyone in the mist. No matter how much you cover yourself. That's sound effect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I can't help it. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's cool. I mean, the vampires are going to turn up and go straight for you. That's that's fine by me. <laughs> Admittedly, that was Dimitri's thought as well. Was that guy? Well, I go out on him now. <laughs> Well, you, you you do know from the stories that the paladin is normally the last one taken. Because um, once they take out the paladin, it's a lot harder to follow the group. So they oh. normally go for the least bright first. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you, you start walking... Uh, from the light of your uh, celestial uh, friend, and start heading north along the um, river. Everything around you is glowing with uh, a dull red glow. Uh, and each of you seems to have that red glow about you as you move forward. Um, Bradshaw will just start licking the blood because he just thinks it's something new. So. Okay, give me a uh, constitution saving throw. For Bradshaw? Yep. Oh, no, sorry, not, I'm Bruce, I meant, sorry. I meant Bruce, <laughs> I don't know what the constitution is for Bruce. Not Bradshaw, it's Well, Bruce. I, I thought we were having a, like another moment like with the insects. <laughs> okay. No, yeah, no. You've been to mode. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. I just realised I wasn't... Yeah. Um, so Bruce, Bruce would have done it. I have no idea what we would have said to Bruce's constitution. I'll leave it up to you to decide. So, um, you, you're trying to, uh, get Bruce to be addicted to this stuff? No, no, Bruce just, it just, Bruce's mind just goes, what's this stuff? As a, as a goat does, you know? So, and I'll leave it up to you what happens, so. Okay, he seems to enjoy the taste. Of course he would. And he starts um, licking your leg. I, I just give him a no, not in public. Stop it. He ignores you and keeps going. Sorry. I don't have pants on. Oh, he's licking the blood off the pants. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, you also said you put armor on, so he's licking your armor. I've had five more of these guys. No, Bruce, don't do this. It's embarrassing, Bruce. Stop it. Be a, be a good guy. Okay, uh, he uh, continues licking your armor. Look, we did, went through this before, you know, how we went all that stuff through the, the farting incident, and then we go into this stuff. You're better than this, Bruce. Don't go back to your old self. Okay, uh, he starts um, munching a little bit on your armor as well. I get an apple out of my, pot, my, my bag of holding because I've got a few apples before left. Yep. Here's an apple, okay? Here you go. Go away. He, he waits for a moment to get it I mean, like, nice and covered in the red stuff and then starts chewing on it. This game is going to be enemy. I say to us internally. I say to myself. Okay, oh, so so David, what you've missed out since you've been away uh, is that uh, since you've entered the mists, you can see each of you clearly within about a hundred um, feet of each other, but you can't see the ground within twenty feet of each other. Uh, you see animals at about thirty feet. 
But you can see Sir Clovis no matter how far away you get from him. And as you're currently on mute, I'm assuming you're just listening. I didn't realize I was on mute. <laughs> so you picked that up, David? Uh, I got most of that. Okay, so uh, you can see um, normally for about 20 feet. Uh, you can see animals at about 30 feet. You can see uh, your companions at about 60 feet. But you seem to be able to see Sir Clovis no matter how far he gets away from you. Okay, well, you'll pick it up when you get there. You're heading north through the blood mists. Um, so, yeah. <coughs> the, uh, I'm guessing we're staying within about 20 feet or so of the river. Maybe 20 to 50 feet of the river if we're starting on the pathway. Um, so, so that way, A, it can be kept in sight, but B, also... Uh, we might just keep it in hearing range and things like that as we're heading northwards. I'm assuming we're not finding any evidence or spotting any other travellers at this time? Uh, no, from what you heard from some of the people in town, they, they've had uh, a general order and all the villages in the region had migrated to Rimmonsgrad. Yeah. Uh, before the um, mists thickened and started to... Uh, um, be a little more cloying. And several different forces of enemies arrived. Yeah, that, that sort of did encourage people to return to the uh, large town. Yes. Probably the most full the town's ever been of living. Yes. Don't have to keep as much space for the dead. Wow. Well. As they offered, they had the, they had the wonderful coffin motels. Except they were for the living. <laughs> okay, so walking along the edges of the river, was Bradshaw going to fly up on his broom? No. Nope. You don't want to separate from the party? No, why would we do something like that, man? Especially with you as a DM, why would I even think about doing something like that? You did suggest it. I know. Uh, if I had more encouragement from um, a certain person, I would, but he didn't seem to encourage him based on well, his response, so I didn't really think it was necessary. Yeah. So, and Plan wasn't there to answer, so it's okay. So. All good. I mean, I guess the other question is uh, is Sir Clodius actually uh, riding and flying on his griffin, or is he walking? Um, well, he's on his griffin, but the griffin's just, like, walking and it's not flying. <laughs> the griffin's wings are currently soaked. Well, not that it would make a huge difference to the visibility side of the house, but it probably bears his feet on the ground and therefore doesn't display his uh, brightness even further afield. <laughs> Although, probably, if he flew above us, he could be almost like a portable sun. Uh, though with uh, the two of you who rolled over 20, you do see that there, um, directly above Sir Clovis is a uh, pulsing glow, uh, uh, probably about half a mile up. Mm -hmm. uh, pulsing in the sense of it appears to be a glow of another creature, or is the creature is effectively a... Uh, a magical effect that might be like a scrying device or something to uh, You believe it is an indicator of a um, holy warrior in the blood mists? Yeah, so essentially it's like nerd is here. Okay. Well, no, 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 apparently it's. 
Oh, okay, yeah, 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 come on. He, he gets, he got saying another holy warrior. That was weird to say, yeah, he does. It's a case of this. It's further indication of the, uh, the effects of his, uh, well, the blood mix effects upon his person. Which is why it's very hard for the Ethangarians to get a foothold in here because their most powerful spellcasters are all clerics. Yeah. All paladins. Uh, yes. And so when, when you first described them, I thought, hey on, sorry, being followed by another paladin, that'd be unusual. What were the odds? Um... So you you are uh, probably about half an hour out of town at this point when you've noticed all this. Mm -hmm. So well, Demetri will be aiming to uh, keep everyone moving rapidly. Okay, you think you have about uh, four hours to the uh, rapids. Mm -hmm. um, and. And the crossing of the rapids, is that right? Uh, that I should be able to cross there, yeah. You know what, if Clovis has got a nerdish gear sign, um, Belath is going to summon Regent and ride upon him. Okay, so you, you notice that you now have um, two nerdsies here signs. Um... As you have a celestial creature amongst you. On the riverbank, Martin. Yep. It's obvious that the blood mist does continue across the river to the other side. Well, it, it, it continues at least 20 feet across the river, does it? Uh, you, you can um, see that it seems to continue into the river. Yep. And the um, river itself looks like um, wine. It, 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 it is um, uh, like flowing blood. Yep. Uh, Dimitri will make a suggestion that uh, it may be worth at least exploring to see if the river does form enough of a boundary uh, to at least, if someone can fly over the river and just see if the mist is actually removed on the other side that would be advantageous um, if not then it doesn't make much difference by the time we manage to transport everyone across the river potentially it would be a challenge but like I said so if uh, the griffin can fly I would suggest that uh, uh, Sir Clovis at least just scout across to the other side of the river if the griffin can't fly then he'll suggest that uh, Bradshaw attempt his broom across the river just to see if, they, see if the blood mist clears. Um, can we uh, so Clovis gets to make a nature roll. I didn't get that, what did you get? Natural 20. Natural 20. Uh, you think you'd probably need um, to dry out his feathers before you take off because uh, you're not going to stay aloft. Uh, I already know. Um, can't, can't do that. Okay. And the griffin uh, looks quite miserable right now. Is Bradshaw willing to... Uh, attempt a flight across the river? Uh, Bradshaw sighs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if I have to do it. Um, so he goes into his bag of holding, wiggles around for a bit, mm -hmm. pulls out the broom. Yep. Yeah. And I go, come on, broomy. Yeah. Um, Give me a perception uh, roll as you pull out the broom. Do Oh, that's actually a good one for us. Why do I get it? No, I don't want it. Um, 22. Okay, so a as the broom comes out, you notice that you seem to be uh, in a patch of um, no fog. Okay. 
Okay. And how far does that pack extend? Uh, the length of the blue broom. Hmm. Hmm. I, I, I investigate the broom more than I would usually do at home. Being a dwarf warrior doesn't really look at brooms too well. I think that's a, um, I don't say in front of my wife, of course, but yeah, something to job I don't usually do. Um, but we find people asking on that broom. Um, uh, okay, it's... So, yeah, so I'll, I'll go, hmm, strange. Hmm. I think about for five seconds ago. Okay, so just across the river, right? Richard? So you can see, see the butt this please. Um, okay, so, <clears throat> get on. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm sure with all my armor, I'm over 200 pounds, um, and he goes 30 feet at the end of that 30 feet speed. Um, yeah, we're gonna, so, okay, thank you. Make sure we're gonna keep moving up the river. So. Yeah. Cool. Um, you so, yeah, so what I'll do, I'll just make sure I can float up, like get onto it, say my command word as per your instructions. Yep. Um, and then I'll just try to hover for about, uh, about 10 feet off the ground, see how, see how it feels. Anything different at the moment? Um, yeah, you, you sort of notice that you're not shedding any light. Not getting light around the room? Or they're, they're, you, you're not shedding any light like the rest of the party. If I, if I use my command word on my flame tongue weapon, mm -hmm. does it shed light or just is it half light? Okay, um, as your flame tongue lights up, um, it gets the mist gets thicker around you as the um, blood boils. What does that mean? Uh, you basically find yourself in a cloud of darkness. Okay, I'll turn that off. <laughs> if, if, I'm, if nothing really bad happens, like it feels un, you know, wonky, after about say maybe 10 20 seconds about 10 feet i would um i will i'll watch where the guys are going yep. i'll just try to get the right direction um how wide is this river by the way uh, what? the river is probably about one to two miles across okay i'm going hmm but i'm thinking to myself at the same time do all of swim too well okay anyway um so I'll try and do the right thing. Um, keep in, yeah, go up, get, you know, about, go about a 30 feet off the ground, I think. So once you get um, about 30 feet off the ground, uh, yeah. uh, anyone who's not mounted can't see you. Yeah, okay. Um, I said, I'm, I'm going to go, can I see, can I see people down there? But they can't see me? Or you can see them, yes. And you okay. can see Seclovis quite clearly. Like a beacon. Oh. I, thought, I thought Bradshaw's fast would, you know, highlight that. <laughs> but anyway, so I'll, um, so I'll, I'll tip to get close to the edge of the river, mm -hmm. have a look, watch it for about maybe half a minute to make sure I don't see anything unusual in the river. One thing. I see I'll, lots of unusual things yeah. in the river looking up at you. The, is it? Yeah. Oh shit! I want to go a bit higher then, because <laughs> I'm worried about him. Back into the river. Um, in my head. Um, so I was like, hmm, this thing's looking big in the river. Mm. As you get higher, the river disappears from view. Okay, okay. I want enough that I feel that I've got a good distance from anything to who wants to grab me from the river. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll, I'll try to fall. Um, while I'm a bit higher, do I see anything else above me? Or is, like, is it all clear above kind of thing? Or uh, just... The mist is still up there. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Interesting. I still, I still see um, Sir Clovis, I assume, so. You still see Sir Clovis quite clearly. Okay, I'll use that as my beacon of where they are. Mm -hmm. um, you got the only one. <laughs> anyway, so I will um, feel very confident, but in my, in personally I'll be able to help. Okay, I'll try to fly across the river to see if I can see anything. Okay. Um, without seeing Sir Clovis, you don't feel like you're moving. But watching Sir Clovis, oh. you do notice you're moving. Oh, 
Because all, you, all you're doing is flying through red stuff. Okay. Without actually touching the red stuff. You're in a bubble okay. of red. Okay. I'll try to make, get that even thing where I can see the river that might be high enough off it kind of thing, so I feel like I can see some stuff. To see the river, um, you need to be within 20 feet of it. Because we're beyond the age of the, the, the blood beast is restricting your line of sight to 20 feet. It's just that you've got a, maybe a couple of feet around you without the, the beast. Hmm. I'm not liking this idea a lot. So, I'm going to go back to where I see the beacon of greatness. Yep. Instead of like this. Um, and I'll fly it down again. Yeah. I don't really feel comfortable flying up there by myself. I'd rather be with you guys. So, so the blood beast continued across the river, did it? It continued, and when I looked up 60 feet, it was still going up uh, and up. So, I okay. don't feel I don't really comfortable because I don't know what's else in this blood beast that by myself on a flying broom, cross water, not a dwarf's best thing. Dwarf's okay. don't like water. Can you give your your broom to Sepulvus? Because apparently the broom uh, squashed your light source. If we can dim Sepulvus, that would be a good thing. I don't know Sepulvus too well yet, do I? Not really. Not really, but it's up mm. to you if you'd like to give your prized um, broom of flying to someone else. I don't Night, dude. So he's pretty trustworthy. Yeah, but that was that's what I thought of Dimitri when I first met him too. So, but um, <laughs> you were <laughs> naive. You were naive. Little bit of a burn there. Okay. To be fair, to be fair, Dimitri. One of the things, Dimitri's got a low charisma, but he's intelligent enough to make a good first impression. And just as soon as you talk to him for five minutes, that goes. Oh, 100%. 100%. Um, I, I do... Oh, it's muffled, muffled. I was going to do a... I'm just going to do a look up and down of Sir Clovis because I'm trying to... It's trustworthy, but it's like a beacon to the kind of everything around here. Mm. Not the only beacon, though, because you can, also, you can I also... I will see. give a look over at Plowman. If Plowman gives me the nod, I'll go, okay. Because yeah. you can also see Plowman's horse... From a distance as well. But if we can, if we can dull uh, Sir Clovis, yep. then Regem can be sent away. Okay. Can be shot uh, Okay. Um. I'll, um. By the way, David, I just looked over towards Plam and see if you think that Sir Clovis is a good guy. I'm just giving you a look of, you yeah, okay? And I'll, if you give me a nod, I'll go. Okay. I'll give him. The, I'll pass the broom across to Clovis. Find uh, shots. Doesn't know. Yeah, that's good enough for me. It was, it was a kind of like a slit across the throat kind of thing that I wouldn't know. So I struck and struck from. Um, and so I'll, I'll hand over my broom. Said just the broom. Say be nice, this broom. Well, we don't know whether it'll have any effect at all. Just let it hold it. See if it does, does, that, does the effect. If it doesn't work, give it, get it back. It makes no difference. Yeah. I'm not attuned to it at the moment, Mark. By the way, just be reference. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, while the, uh, the uh, Bradshaw was going across and having noticed the fact that the uh, magic item apparently interacted with the uh, blood mist and also um, noting that the fire sword interacted with the blood mist, Dimitri's going to, I mean, he's currently holding on to the guy's staff. If he uses a walking stick type effect, mm -hmm. uh, but he'll basically, yeah, concentrate a bit on it, just make certain that, hang on. The staff doesn't have any effect on the glow or on the mist or anything like that, does it? Doesn't seem to have any effect on it. No, that's all right. So, does uh, Sir Clovis holding the broom of flying have any effect on his light? <laughs> as soon as he's um, uh, got it next to him, uh, he seems to uh, uh, dim and disappear in the light. Okay. <laughs> Don't let go of that boo. Palmer, 
I think you're walking. <laughs> I think you'd have to kiss me first. Are you that guy? Uh, he said, I think you'll have to kiss me first. Well, would you rather be kissed I think by the... just miss Richard. <laughs> would you rather be kissed by the the delicate Kubal baby? <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay, so, uh, you, you do notice everything starts to become, um, just a, a dull red around you. And uh, no, no big bright light of redness coming from anyone. Mm -hmm. And above <laughs> you, the, um, big, um, glowing, uh, ball in the sky seems to dull and fade. Um, with the just the effect of the broom uh, repelling the mist, allow his griffin to dry out a bit. Only in the uh, five feet he's holding it for a creature that takes up um, technically eight of those squares. Um, it does not. Yeah, okay. Uh, so he, he, he can dry out an eighth of it at a time. Yeah, uh, okay. it was for the other guys. So we were just thinking of that, uh, if we can effectively allow the griffin to fly again briefly, uh, then potentially uh, Sir Clovis could put the broom, uh, tuck the broom into the, uh, the, the griffin's wings, or into the feathers, allow the bright light to activate again, and then fly away to the west or something for a, a few hundred yards, carry the broom, pick up the broom again, and then come back and hopefully lead them in, a, in the wrong direction. But it might be hard to get enough uh, flight out of the griffin in that meantime. So. You also have the problem that um, once he's more than 60 feet away from the rest of you, he can't see you. That's not necessarily a problem for Denise's respect plan, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I heard scapegoat somewhere in that plan. <laughs> it's not like we would have got that far further north up the river in the time you went and flew away. <laughs> Depends on how hard you push. <laughs> um, to will attempt a precipitation on the uh, uh, Griffin's wings to see if it has much effect on the dry or anything like that. Okay, so you, you clean off um, a small amount of its wing, and as you move on to the next section, the other section um, starts to get soaked again. Yeah, yeah. So precision station will work on a small section as long as it's not getting um, continuously dampened. Um, you can dry out an entire object over time, but you can't do an entire object at once. It's sort of like putting a blow dryer um, onto a waterfall. Yeah. Saying, yes, I can dry out the waterfall. Okay. We do have a way of making this work. Um, and we could lay a false trail. Dimitri could cast fly on both Sir Clovis and Plamen. Together, they could fly away to leaving a false trail. Plama can hold the boom or something like that. They don't need to cast. Technically, the uh, they don't need to cast fire. Both of them do it. So the boom itself can fly. Um, the but yeah, Plama could carry the broom while uh, sort of Clovis has his bright light shining. Leads off a distance, even a few miles potentially, um, and then uh, they can. So Clovis can take the broom, and the two of them can come straight back to us, because obviously Plamen always knows where his beach is. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
Kwame right. just grinds his teeth. <laughs> but you do realize you could do it with just Plam on the line. On the gym, actually, yeah. Um, yeah, let's do that. And you could just cast Fly on him, so he, he could just ride um, west for a time and then um, fly back to you. Yeah. Well, we have to go and fly west for a time. We usually have to activate the gem and carry the gem. We've got to take the gem across. Or he could just summon... We're getting pretty quick, so I'm going to keep the fly. Or he could just um, summon Regem and tell Regem to run off in a direction. That's not happening. I just have to try. Not even Dimitri would actually suggest that option. <laughs> I just um, sort of throw it out there as an option for Dimitri. Yeah. It's not an option. Dimitri can suggest the option. No, no, okay. Even Dimitri, like, you can't be sent off alone. Okay. Oh, don't worry. It's just for a reason for his character to eat your character. <laughs> He's quite happy for the PK to stop by himself, but not, 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 Um, the, talking to the Greyshaw, and then like I said, you know, we're, we're, we're moving forward under the cover of, uh, not, uh, a non-climbing, so climbing while we're talking this, but, um, the, uh, how far can your balloon fly, Rachel? <laughs> and can anyone fly it? Um, Mark's away. At the moment, he's just uh, picking up his dinner. Yeah. Well, I think he said it, it hadn't been attuned, so it's all good. Okay. Yeah, so I would expect anyone to fly it, but obviously. Yeah, well, I'm sure Dimitri would tell you if anyone could fly it. But <laughs> 30 feet over 200. 400 max weight. Yeah. And how heavy is um, Plumman? Oh, he's really not that heavy, to be honest. 200 tops. <laughs> Technically, the plan works. It doesn't need the fly spell on you because you've got a group of fly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, that sounds good. All right, so Plowman grabs the broom, he swears a few times, summons Regem, goes for a ride, flies at, back. As he starts to depart, yep. Dimitri will just say, just confirming, you can sense my position back here, as you'd like it in the sense of whether or not you'd like it. Obviously, it's not something I'm sure you try to do very often. So. Plowman uh, goes to outside of 60 feet and then attempts to sense shithead. Um, yes, um, you, you know um, from your item where the uh, Mighty Dimitri is, as um, you have a direction saying Mighty Dimitri this way. Uh, he throws a hand axe at the presumed square. <laughs> so a, a, a hand axe lands at the Mighty Dimitri's feet. And then he flies off. Okay, he'll pick it up and. Considering that pop that flew out, that, that apparently came out of nowhere, that we didn't see it from 20 feet, until it was 20 feet away from us. The uh, Dimitri will pick it up and say, well, good. He knows where we are. Uh, he throws another hand at Axe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then another one comes flying and lands in front of your feet. I mean, does it have to be at his feet? Well, you did say uh, the square he was standing in. Uh, I mean, the square is a five-foot cube, really. <laughs> so what you're saying is, in fact, it flies past my face and goes beyond the 20 feet so I can't retrieve it for you. I could care. I mean, the only use the only use plumber has for these hand axes is comedic value. <laughs> um, he also has he also has plenty more spears. Um, all right, so he goes in and executes the plan. Okay, everyone and nothing sees. Nothing bad happens at all. Everyone sees Regem uh, start riding off um, um, to the uh, east. 
West. Sorry, West. Um, missing half his rear. Basically, where the where the um, broom is. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. So, being as though we haven't had a chance to, Plumman and Rajem will utterly bolt. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dimitri suggests that, likewise, we should be moving as fast as we can upriver. And uh, as you watch, you see a glowing ball in the um, sky above um, follow slowly. <laughs> or at least it feels uh, like it's slowly from. The, at, least, at least it looks like it's slow from the um, uh, height it is up. Cool. Basically, it's high enough that anyone in the mist should be able to see where that ball is. Yeah. Yeah. But you and you were saying it was, it was moving slowly, but that would just be the, the effect of distance. Is that right? Yeah. Because it's most likely at the top of the mist. Yeah. He just has to move with the um, person, which from that height, it looks like it's slow moving. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Have to, have to. Okay, so um, I will give Clamon um, uh, perception rolls with disadvantage as he's going through the mists. Yeah, somebody roll that for me, please. Do you want me to? Uh, anybody except <laughs> I could pull out my cursed dice. Literally anybody. You know what? I'd rather the cursed dice than Jeremy. <laughs> I've got a 13. I'll take that. You know, David. Uh, you know, no. I've got an 18. I'm I don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah, got one oh, on the other. On the other yeah. one. There we go. Uh, so 17 for perception. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Perception, 17. So as you go running through um, at high speed, you are traveling faster than you can see as you're going across valleys, between trees, over um, uh, debris, uh, jumping um, uh, gaps in um, ravines. You're going up breakneck speed. Uh, luckily for you, Regem seems to have no problems yeah. seeing it. Yeah, no, that's not really luckily for me at all. But, uh... Cool, cutting, planning. Well, from your perspective, yeah. it's like, I, you can't see where you're going, but Regem seems to know perfectly fine. Yeah, that's great. Can't wait to go back. <laughs> <laughs> And you also find yourself um, going past what appears to be um, uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of shambling creatures. Well, I don't know. Walk it back. That are all turning towards you as you go past them. Oh. Alright, after an appropriate amount of time, I'll uh, stop and make sure there's no shambling creatures around. Uh, when you stop, you feel as if you're surrounded by shambling creatures. Gonna test out the room to see if it works. Did Mark give you the command word? I assume he would have. Mark's currently not on the line. Dimitri did specifically ask the question about whether anyone could use his word. So. And like I said, Grant still gets along reasonably well with Clarkson. Okay, so yes, yeah, you, <laughs> so yes you, you, you use the command word and you are able to fly up. All right, dismiss Regem and use the uh, wave of idiocy to detect idiot. Uh, you you um, detected the direction of the Almighty Dimitri. Yeah, so detect idiot succeeds, and I will move towards the direction of. And, and, and you not have an, this. Not, not an idiot, Martin, let's be specific. Not an idiot, the idiot. And at the closer you get, the more satisfied you feel from the item. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you begin to understand the real meaning behind Dimitri's plan. 
Glenn has always known it. Glenn is dumb. Dimitri is dumb. <laughs> but you somehow feel better the closer you get to him. Obviously, yeah. you're safer. More, more calm and content. Every <laughs> Lewis is going to like this. <laughs> Can somebody tell me the range of a chaplain? <laughs> I've always drawn my eight in my um, deal then when I heard you say all oh, the stuff about Dimitri, so I was told it, mate. Yeah, I'm glad I've already had dinner, that's all I'll say. Well, if you like, I can, you know, add more comments to that. You know, I, I can. Must. Okay, so using a javelin from a distance. Do do do. Where is my javelin? Oh, don't put it. Don't put it. <laughs> Basically, the uh, yeah, plumber announces he announces the arrival before we see it. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Okay, so a uh, javelin lands in front of Dimitri. Just as you um, see, uh, hear the whooshing sound of a broom coming in uh, nearby. Uh, yeah, well, it arrives and definitely lands gracefully and not awkwardly at all, um, and hands the broom off to Rachel. Though, on, on, on the bright side, you didn't actually have to um, use your magical finder to find them. You could have just looked to see where Sir Clovis was. Uh, Plumbing hands the broom over to Slovis and sits down and stares stares back at Dimitri. And Dimitri will look back and say, Why did you not take the clover with you? Uh, That was the whole point of the plan. You told me to go on my own. Now he can do his own thing. I don't care. No, no, the whole like, point was the whole point was that the bright light was supposed to go different to us. You told me to go on my own with broom. I had. I told you, the Clovis had to be the one to go. Oh, you didn't tell me that at all. If you did not listen, keep it up, smart boy. Now, tell, tell Fancy Feathers to do it himself. He can do it now. Right. I, um, I do pat Plowman on the back for the javelin throw. I thought it was quite, quite well. I said, you missed him by that much. Yes, actually, I missed him by about three and a half feet. I was going for the heart. <laughs> he has no heart. Oh, he has heart. It beats. He just has no heart, if you know what I mean. Retro Bob. Anyway, send feathers away. Go, do the thing. Take the broom. Have fun. Alright, so do I have to do, yep. do this again? Is that what we do? Well, it was a good practice one, I guess. Um, Jeremy, we're going to have to do this again. Yep. Yep, alright. Repeat the process, plus Sir Clovis. Uh, so, can Sir Clovis, well, will Sir, Sir Clovis, I'm assuming, can, with Jen can carry two, assuming you're oh, happy yeah. to have it. Oh, oh yeah. Can, but I'm guessing the broom can't carry two. I, I don't know, or, this was your the logistics or, in the idea. No, um, the broom can only really, oh. Now, see, the broom doesn't want to carry the meter, I'm going to put it straight out there now. Uh, I wouldn't even suggest it. Dimitri's not going at all. That's not. That, that's, it, no. You can carry so up to yeah. 400 pounds. Yeah, so, can, so basically it's a 50 feet room. Carries up maximum 400. If you over 200 pounds, it goes back to 30 feet. Okay. Okay. Well, with the combined weight of Slaman and the broom, be more than 400. 
Farman and the broom or Farman and the oh, broom? Plus Farman and the Yeah. Almost certainly. Yeah, so Clovis wears full plate, so. Mm. But you can take that off. <laughs> oh, well. We don't have a half a day to take this stupid tin suit off. The, uh, the alternative. Um... How will you solve this? Um, easily. Put him on Rochelle. And then send him off with the broom? Sorry? And then send him off with the broom? Yeah. I don't well, mind him going with Rochelle, but, uh, just don't want to send Rochelle on his own. Yep, yeah, okay, that could be my original option. Um, ensuring that uh, Sir Clovis knows how to use the broom, um, and it, it, okay. There's Did only one. Did describe the effect of the ride and things like that that he went through? Oh no, he says he's still manager. That there's right. one drawback That's... that you might want to think of before you send him off. Which is? How will he find you? That's why, that, that, that's why it was important that Plumman also went. Oh, um, all right, so... Uh, we can do a shuttle. So, Plumman takes Sir Clovis out. Then they turn the blinky light off. Uh, comes back, drops him off, and then goes does his own run. Uh, it's not ideal. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure how it works because he's filling me up with the broom trying to carry. Like okay, if, if, if the broom can't carry, no, because he can just he can just ride back. But ride back on what? The boo. But you can't, you won't know the way back. He can just, Rajem can lead him. Like, you, you're, that, actually, no, that's really easy because Rajem still has the light. Yeah. So if, if I go back to the party with the light on, then Clovis is going to be able to see the light and pass the light, right? The whole point is to have the, the light away from the party for a period of time leading in the other direction. And Jeremy goes back to the party, waits for Clovis to show up with the broom, and then takes... Oh, does, is, does Clovis have the light, or does... Both Clovis and the regime have the light. Uh, and okay, the sorry, I thought it was... I thought, sorry, for, I saw, for some reason, I thought it was heads. Yeah, um, no, um, yeah. So, yeah, so, without armour, is... Uh, Clovis and uh, Plamen. I very much doubt it. I very much doubt it. Come on, I'm sure, I'm sure you're 180 pound weakling, both of you. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you've been trying to up the whole time, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, is Jeremy trying to get a character killed tonight? Maybe we can jump right in. Ah, whoops. I slipped with this glaive. <laughs> Oh, my hammer side was almost getting out of the real reaction like a whole thing. Okay. It would be true, Dimitri Glory, to kill him with his own weapon. So, yes, uh, if you're unattuned to the um, glaive, then. Sir Clovis can use it to point in a direction to Dimitri. Oh, it's all his. Go on. Have fun. <laughs> However, that'll take a bit of time to uh, go into tuning other tuning. I have a crazy idea, guys. What if we bother with it? Oh. <laughs> because I don't really want to be 
how you could be just go with it the whole way. You know, for once I have to agree with it. Retro goes the beach, and you mean the beach? Oh no, there we go. Okay, yeah. Make it. <laughs> yes, he does stand out. Well, come on, smart boy, figure it out. Yeah, uh, I'm just checking. Hello from Wonderful. Hey, I'm at a reception. Can we get travel attention? Oh, really far. As far as you'd like. Uh, so you can probably go 120 feet per turn, so six And the rest. Yeah, it can be faster than all, wasn't it, for sure? Um, on top of that, you've got um, running it, etc., etc. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. How good are you holding your breath, Corinda? Very sorry. Okay. The uh, the matrix that holds up one of your bags to hold you. Okay. Well, you can jump in like this. While one laughs and just one says yes. Climb and take carries you away to the uh, along the again. For about, say, 10 to 15 minutes. And then, depending upon how long you can hold your breath. And the. And then you can come out and. Uh, no, actually, no. The the amusing thing is, it wouldn't be the first party who forgot about putting someone in a bag of holding. Yeah, for once, Plumman agrees with Dimitri, and uh, he also promises he won't forget to let you out. However, it doesn't actually be a problem anyway, because we really need you in the bag of holding on the way back. Which will take a lot longer than 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So my bag of holding goes to 10 minutes. That's why I thought I'd just mention that, Jeremy. Well, no, most bag of holding do go for 10 minutes. You've got air for 10 minutes, and then you hold your breath. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure a strong night guy team can hold it for 5 minutes. <laughs> That's why I say 10 to 15. Sure. I'm going to just get one. Bradshaw's going to quiet on this whole idea based on. <laughs> It's from Dimitri too, so. Does the broom cloak a person or a square? Roughly does a square. <laughs> well, if he just pokes his head out, then that's going to be within the square. Like, if we just have a portable disembodied head hanging out of a, hanging out of a bag... Then one, he can he can uh, he can breathe, and two, he'll still be cloaked. Well, I like the theory of it. I'm not certain whether that would actually like whether the extra dimensional spaces of working can work that way. I don't know that you're going to be half um, in and half out of an extra dimensional space. I'm happy to go yeah. as if it's allowed, but <laughs> you would have to because you have to be able to reach into a space to grab something. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Look, I for one am willing to risk Seclovis in this youth for this scientific venture. <laughs> and and as Dimitri, Dimitri is willing to transfer all the context of one of his bags of holding into the other one. <laughs> so Clovis is in the cast a cantrip. Um, 
What can you cost a cantor himself? I'm not sure if anyone can figure out what it is. And he's gonna go and talk to um he's gonna go and talk to Dimitri and uh, he's gonna cast protect evil, which protect and he tells him, This will protect you from the undead. You don't need to be afraid. We are powerful, you know. They 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 might think we're weak and they might come and attack us. But we will destroy them, oh. you know. And he had, like sprinkles some holy water on him as well, or, like you know, and blesses him and says, you know, understand this. We uh, are, we are warriors of good and, and and what is right. As you sprinkle the, the holy water, from... the uh, mist around you explodes in flame. Oh, my... You know, he tells he tells Dimitri, we feed the gods. Oh, you know, so, um, <laughs> just just to point out at that point there, as you sprinkle the holy water. Dimitri, okay, put it away if you start to bring out the bomb. Uh, you both take um, uh, 10 points of fire damage as uh, the holy water explodes in the mist. <laughs> what was the damage, Mark? Uh, 10 points of um, fire damage. Okay. Yeah, well, so Dimitri's arcane ward will take 7 because Dimitri is less affected by fire. Bradshaw talks to so, Bruce, Bruce, and just says, "Why don't I come back to this party?" And how about your abjuration? Does that absorb it? Yeah, that's the arcane ward. Yeah. Mm. Did you take any damage, Dimitri? I didn't. No. Okay. Well, um, so Clovius will lay on hands on himself, um, and he'll he'll laugh. He'll try and laugh it off. Don't use like, your magic hey. here. But you don't need to be scared, my friend. So You're powerful. A, a, you as you lay on hands on oh. yourself, um, the mist around you um, uh, lights you lights up. As soon as he was going to do anything on those lines. But you you just used magic for yourself, Dimitri. I said his magic, i.e., his divine magic. Ah, uh, okay. Oh. Sorry, that's oh. arcane. Yep. Right. Is and you. You, you hear a bell ringing. Sorry, I think that I didn't get either of there. So you, you hear a bell ringing centered on Sir Clovis. And are you with us, Sir Clovis? Uh, He's still with us at the moment. Shut up, you've already caused enough damage. And he uh, wields his blood lance, which is particularly powerful against vampiric entities. And he and he, and he mounts his um, noble mount. Of course, he it's currently bedraggled and wet. It could still charge on the ground. It's a mighty beast. If I remember rightly, Martin, yep. the nine magic band in this place is that right? Yep. Yep. That's so, are we on the the good side of the river? No. Nope. Can we get on the good side of the river? You could try, but that might require swimming the river right now. Okay. Which is a river of blood. No, really, the air is a mix of blood, but... Hey. Mm, the magic <sighs> If Bradshaw, as, as unintelligent as Bradshaw can be, will tell Sir Claudius, you need to get the F out of here because they're coming for you. And so, say, wait, so your character, hang on, just clarify that. Your character wants my character to leave the party so he dies or what? No, 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 no. My character, says, my character says, you just cast Divine Magic in an area that doesn't like Divine Magic. I think if you get out the other side of the river, you might be safe. Oh, well, except that he's, except that he's with and can't fly. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just look at both Plowman and... But it can still ride pretty fast. Yeah, it might be able to, but it's just a little bit soggy. Yeah. I have, a, I have, I can fly. My character can fly without his mount. Um, but like, is it worth it? Like, being apart from separating from the party? Well, uh, based on that bell, um, and I probably Jamie's probably gonna have a look at all. Uh, as well. Go on, Joe. Go on. Yeah. So, Brad just going. Do you think my issues with being a slave is bad? Um. I do remember them saying that divine magic is banned in this whole province, and you know that person that we walked past the, uh, the inn yesterday, um, or 
Society of Survival. Okay, right. mm-hmm. yeah. um, it was earlier today. Well, earlier, earlier. Yeah, it was a few hours ago. Yeah, that person walked past. He looks for people like who've just done that. So. I really don't want to be around those sort of people because they're not really good. So. Okay, as you're saying that, you can hear a um, slight, uh, feel a slight tremor in the ground beneath you. Uh oh. Well, if I cross the river, that means it's like legal again or something? No. It's, 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 way it's more about the <laughs> vampires not being able to cross running water. Yeah. But oh, that's 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 what they're likely to come right now. Uh, Dude, so Clovis has the blood lance. It's like a vampire slaying magical lance. He's, he's, he's not. <laughs> he's waiting. He's waiting. Okay. Right. Yeah, but he's not a vampire. We've got a face right now. Oh, yeah, uh, as I said, I don't know what you're talking about. The mere watchman of this area are uh, the stuff that bring nightmares to the, the most dangerous creatures of the night. So. Um, and so, yeah, so the rumbling in the ground, does it feel like it's coming from the ground, or are we feeling like the um, rumbling um, and deep coming towards us? I will give um, our dwarf another perception roll. Uh, okay. Just normal roll, or just advantage? Uh, you, have it, you have advantage on this roll. He wrinkles his nose. Smells like. Well, my first one was 19, so I'm happy with that one. Um, 25 total perception. Okay, uh, through the um, burns of the earth, you feel something um, large coming your way. Yeah, um, you need to go ahead and get over. Uh, Bella grabs Bradshaw, lets him and runs. Could we just kill this shit? Well, the first one, quite possibly. So, but we don't know. We're actually going to direct you to get to the, uh, to the client who said, all this time you can fly by yourself. <laughs> and he prepares to face whatever it is going to come through here. So Clovis tries to seek something comforting to Dimitri. He reminds Dimitri that he was considered a god and, you know, that he defeated Thanatos and, or, you know, saved all the gods again. Just get yourself ready to the eye. The calm down for Yeah, I'll, I'll still get a pick up my plan and take me out outside the area where the six comes from. Uh, which way is Plum and heading? Yeah, no. Um, I mean, literally, right, like, one step to the 60-foot edge away from, uh, Captain Fettis or over here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of as well. So, I'll, I'll make sure Bruce is in the side. Call Bruce over to make sure he's out of that kind of zone. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Bruce comes yeah, over and starts you, licking your armor. Can you uh, yeah, okay. About, uh, uh, at least when we're going to go looking for him, so, see... The, uh, he's probably back away at least 20 to 50 feet. Um, and he can't get the youngest to scatter around. And as soon as he's going to play with a guy, he's going to say, No, you just stay for it. You stay there. You're all back. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll back him and get him back away about 100 feet behind uh, Plum. Okay. And you won't keep up. Back to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make, make, oh, that, okay. make that about 55 feet. 55, okay. Ah, what will say in the stadium? He does all backing out of the light, so Chloe has been trying to attention to himself by, like, shouting a battle cry and getting his mouth to, like, make a horrible noise at the next. I just look at that, Bradshaw. I look at Gallant. So this guy was good when you went with him before? Because I'm worried about him right now. I'm just saying this to, like, within just, like, a short distance between me and his Uh, Plumber looks back to Bradshaw and just shrugs. Yeah, I'm, I understand totally what Plamon means now, because that's how Plamon talks. So. Okay, so, uh, would Sir Clovis please make a dexterity saving throw? Uh, not just me. Well, just uh, you. Everyone else it up away. <laughs> As the thing comes rocketing out of the ground. Jeremy, can you let Martin Dan, please? Sorry. I got a 15. You got a 15. Okay. Um, so, would you like to be pushed off your griffin? Well, I, I can't be because I've got that magical saddle. 
Okay, so uh, you feel something push against you. Unfortunately, you can't be pushed off the saddle, so you feel something engulf you. Because uh, the DC save was to allow it to push you out of the way. Okay. All good. But can we see anything that's attacking? Chris okay. Hunter? It's swallowing two things. It's swallowing the medium and the large. So you see um, coming from above um, the... Uh, the light seems to dim as something seems to be eating it, um, approaching Sir Clovis. And then Sir Clovis himself seems to disappear within uh, a um, bright crimson mist. Uh, he takes uh, 16 points of necrotic damage. Ralph doesn't take his eye off Dimitri. And attempting a magic missile at the uh, the, the, the beast of mist. And uh, Sir Clovis is currently unable to breathe. So I will be asking okay. for initiative at this stage. Mark, can you roll that for me with uh, advantage, please? Which day are we on? We are on this day. You got a nine. You got nine with advantage, unfortunately. There. Um, um, Just remember that while I set it all up. I've got twenty. Ten it is. Oh, it's kind of Seeing, seeing Dimitri begin to cast magic missile, Balath turns to uh, Bradshaw and just looks back at their monster and. Well, the mist it just sort of shrugs and gestures to it. Yeah, I understand what you mean. We need to go clean up some mess. So I rolled a seven total. Right? Uh, remember that for the moment. I'm still writing things yep. up. Yep. Oh, do, do, do. I think we. Who am I missing? I'm missing David. I got a five. Ten. Okay. <laughs> This is the first time I've rolled for Bradshaw and I had battled for over such a time. So what was Sir Clovis's initiative? I got a five. You got a five? What was Dimitri's? Halfway through a speech. What was Dimitri's? <laughs> so what was uh, Trellin's? Twenty. What was Bradshaw's? Seven. And what what was Plamen's? He got ten. You got ten? Oh, two double figures. <laughs> That's okay. only because I get plus ten on yeah, my alertness feet. Hey, it's not a bad thing to have for some things. Absolutely. I mean, I get plus three, but unfortunately, when you roll a three, it doesn't really matter what you get. <laughs> okay, so Trellin is up first. Okay. What does Trellin wish to do? Um, I'd like to fire my longbow. Of, well, it doesn't matter because it's not. I'm not using my special thing because it takes an action to um, coat it. So okay. I'm just shooting. Uh, Twenty-five. What sort hit. of damage? Uh, two d eight plus d four. Uh, Fifteen for one shot, and oh, a crit. Um. So that'll be double damage. Uh, is it double on the dice? Uh, basically, you roll once, then double it. It just simplifies it. Especially when there's lots of dice involved. <laughs> is it actually a crit? Yes, it's a, tw it's a raw 20. Um, but what's the damage type? Uh, longbow piercing. Longbow piercing? But it's magical. It is magical? Because yes. that, that is the uh, important keyword I was looking for. Sorry, what was that? Uh, if you had not said magical, you would have just shot Sir Clovis only. 
which is probably an unreasonable option right now. I haven't been happy. Okay. <laughs> Not the first quarter show. Because uh, basically, uh, piercing damage, uh, half of it will be dealt to Sir Clovis and half to the creature. All right. Um, so that's uh, 28 damage. So Sir Clovis takes 14 piercing damage. And that would be my encouragement to move in, which will will occur next round. Okay. Well, you can still move. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, your move is different from your action. Yes. Oh, and, and I can move 50 feet. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm also happy for you to um, use a bonus action to change weapons. Uh, yes, I'll move in with the longsword. Okay, then we have um, coming from the uh, south, Bradshaw feels more footsteps. We got company. Then it is um, Plumman's turn. Company, I can do that. Please, Bradshaw, get the tea set. We have guests. Come, come, <laughs> guests. Drink your faces. So Plumman starts hitting cell. I will turn to face. No. Well, I'm going to turn to face the visitors and delay. Okay. Oh, I know, sorry, he will ready and he will ready an attack versus them coming within range. Okay, so uh, the uh, mist uh, affects Sir Clovis again, dealing a further. 16 points of necrotic damage. Well, I'm getting beaten up. Okay, so um, it is now Bradshaw's turn. Um, I, have a good, I have a good perception of where these things are coming to us, aren't they? Uh, you, you uh, think something um, big is coming from the south? I will stand with my best bud. Um, no, maybe five feet apart, five, ten feet apart. I'm trying to... I, I just look at Dimitri. You've got this, Dimitri. And I'll stand with Plowman, ready, ready attack, but then he comes within... In the, I'm trying to make sure I'm between Sir Clovis, um and where this thing's coming from, so I want to make sure that I'm in that kind of path. So, um, so I'm no, ready to attack. No, get the T-set. Get the T-set. Yes, come on. Yes, we can do a nice little Rachel Plowman party, I think. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, just get ready my action for anything that comes in at a certain distance. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do an attack on it. So, and I'm hoping with my sentinel I'll be able to stop it from going any further when it gets past us. It gets past us. So. Okay. Uh, I like it. Ciclotus is getting, like, just absolutely raped by this monster. Two of his mates are just joking about getting a T set out. <laughs> okay, yeah. next person up is Dimitri. Uh, he'll uh, get his magic missile off. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, hey man, we all got some problems. He's stressed out, you know, he needs to drink some tea or some shit to calm down. <laughs> uh, so, so Dimitri's yeah. passing magic missile at, uh, with a third level spell slot. Uh, four, two, three, six. Eight, uh, twelve, thirteen, uh, for seventeen points of force damage. Okay. Mm. Onto the, the the blood mist. Do we have anything more? Any more information or description of how exactly what it? Well, the uh, the, the like more that? it damages our um Sir Clovis, the uh, stronger it looks. What? Okay, yeah. It's good. It's basically a vampiric mist, but it's gaining life when you're in the taste of the juice. So, do I feel that the uh, the, the, the magic missile definitely overhit the mist and not so close? Uh, you you feel that it only hit the mist, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and 
I will then uh, take a, uh, a bonus action to hide and a move action to okay, use my move to uh, stealthily move away from the position where I cast the thing and take up position another 20 feet away from the next one or something. Okay, you do that. And then we're up to Sir Clovis. All right, so what can I actually do in this situation? You are currently engulfed in what feels like slimy redness. You can't see anything. You get to make... Is my griffin in here? Uh, uh, you can feel your griffin, but you can't see your griffin because only you're engulfed. Like, am I my arms engulfed as well? They are, yes. Okay, this is weird. Um... Is it, does it look like it's vulnerable to, like, physical attacks? Uh, hard to tell because all you see is red around you. And it's painful. Uh, it, it seems to be um, pulling your life force out of you. And choking you at the same time. Well, um, what, what do I do, guys? I don't, like, do I try and, like, run, just move out of it? Or, like, I can't really, I don't understand it. Uh, so imagine you've had a, um, uh, did you ever watch the Pokemon, um, TV series? Yeah. Uh, you know Victory Bell? The what? The, the Victory Bell that would jump over the Team Rocket, um, and swallow it all the time. Oh, yeah? Imagine that's happened to your character right now while you're on top of your griffin. Something has swallowed you that's about the same size as you. Yeah, so, quick question, are you a paladin? No, I'm, I'm a celestial warlock uh, fighter. Okay, so you don't have any divine abilities, like the celestial divine good type abilities? A celestial warlock yeah, is divine. Master spell, and I, that, it hurt me, so I'm not going to do that again. Okay, well, I mean... Certainly options that you might have, and I'm not saying I obviously don't know for sure, but options you might have would be at least uh, trying to roll off your griffin, so therefore the griffin's in a position to actually slash and attack and save you, if it wants to. He um, can't roll off, he's held in place by the um, saddle. Oh, well, I would thought the saddle would say that you can't be forced to remove it, but you can that's voluntarily true. get it off if you wish. Oh yeah, that is and true, I, sorry. That's how... So, right. Um, the... <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, like the idea, if you treat it sort of like a grapple, you might be able to try and do some kind of action to escape the grapple. Or, as I say, even if you're just trying to claw it off your face or something, it might be causing some damage to it. Kind of run and attack. I don't know. If you can get off your saddle, I'll give you a strength check. Anything that uses positive energy will hurt it. Yes. A lot. Really? And, and, and it's up there, of course, yes. You've already called the uh, the force the, the forces of evil down upon you, so additional divine powers or magic displays probably aren't going to do any worse harm now. Just might call more. Oh, it's better than dying. Uh, like... <laughs> well, I mean, that's not really your problem at the moment, is it? I've got an ability. Um, I'm going to use it. It's like healing light or something, and it heals me. Um, yeah. yeah, perfect. Uh, but I don't know if that's going to help. <laughs> we'll see. It. So I use we'll find out. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on two secs, hang on. So what's the effect? Is it actually heal you or heal a target? Uh, uh, heal one creature you can see within the feet of you. Uh, there's, and read the rest of the spell and all of it, please. That just says... It's just a, it's a class ability. Um, at first level, you gain the ability to channel celestial energy to deal wounds. You have a pool of D6s, blah, blah. As a bonus action, you can heal one creature you can see within 60 feet of you, spending dice from the pool, the maximum number you can spend, blah, blah. Uh, roll the dice, heal the, heal the damage, you know? There's potentially an important Martin. keyword in there that might affect... Can you see yourself yeah, no, and or the creature while you're blinded by the creature? You are currently... Yeah, blind. so ignore all that. Mark, can we get a ruling on that being positive energy and whether or not it may or may not affect undead creatures? It is, uh, it is. like the heal, the heal spell? Uh, unlike the heal spell, it only does healing. It doesn't affect undead. Yeah, not a problem. 
That's all I need to know. <laughs> it's a special ability for healing, not for attack. Yeah, okay, so no, that's all good. I just punching it scrolls. So the point being then that yeah. If you're allowed to do it on your shelf, when you can't actually see yourself, um, then at least, at the very least, it will provide you potentially some extra hit points that it can then drain off and become stronger with itself. Yeah, uh, all you're doing is feeding it more power. But again, like, oh. from, your, from your character's perspective, of, oh shit, I'm going to die, i got to do something to save myself. Uh, as it you can, and also as you cannot breathe, you you'll go into suffocation once you use any any of those abilities. Right, um, I'm going to use a wind of the planet, which gives me some healing. Okay. And um, I don't I can't tell what else I should do, so I'm going to try and get off my mount and like get on the ground or something. Okay, so one thing you will note with your with your um, second wind is. Your maximum hit points has been reduced by 16 points. Oh. Okay. And possibly you're not echoing your damage because you've got to take one. So half, half the necrotic damage he took has been taken from his maximum hit points. Yep. I get it. Yeah. Okay. So ignoring any of this, does Clovius have any magic weapons? Yeah, I do. I've got a blood lance. And the next thing you need to do is make a strength check to get out of the creature. Alright, alright. So, I just killed, um, about 13 points. Um, uh, and now you need me to do a strength check. Yes. Do a strength check. Does that heal take your action, or is that a bonus action? I got, um, 19 with a strength check. Okay, you get to breathe air for the first time in, uh, about a round or two. As you uh, crawl out of a um, uh, solid <laughs> red mist. Nice. So are you clear right, so, of the monster um, now? He is clear of the monster. Uh, but feather, is Feathers still engulfed or is Feathers engulfed? Fe feathers was too big to be engulfed. Yep, no drama. <laughs> anything is that my, my my action as well it was an action to fall out of the creature <laughs> all right no worries. And you you can technically um move um uh but i believe standing if you fell off your off the griffin no, you could, I'd, I'd say i'd give you at least half your move to move away from the griffin if you wish to Well, if I can stand up, I'll stand up, but otherwise, I'll my mm -hmm. Okay, you're standing next to the uh, griffin with the big blobby um, uh, bit of mist next to you. Next person up is Trellon, who is next to you at this stage. All right. I will um, flame on for my flame tongue and have a go... Okay, everything around you um, turn... Well, actually, you're standing next to Sir Clovis, so yes, um, your, your sword flames up. All right, so I want to have two swipes at the... Um, whatever it is. I'll give you the benefit of the um, um, broom. Of the what? The broom, meaning that you're in the bubble of um, no um, blood. Okay. Because what happened last time you actually brought the sword out in the blood disc and actually effectively put blind at you and all the clothes around you. Alright. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm right next to the creature, whatever it is. Yep. And I got a 20. That is a hit. And I got a 26 to hit. And a 26 is also a hit. Strangely right, that. Now, this is. 3d8 because it's two handed and 2d6 uh, right, so. Um, so the fire damage is just 2d6 of fire so that's six damage mm -hmm. and the other damage is um, the 3d8 plus 5, so that's 21. 
So is that uh, 21 slashing damage? Uh, 21 damage, 21 normal damage, or slashing damage, and it's magical. Okay, that was the um, keyword I was looking for. And uh, 12 plus 5 is 17, and then the fire damage is 8. Um, yeah. So 17 slashing damage and 8 fire damage and then I spent a chi point um, before you spend the chi away. point um, uh, before you spend the chi point uh, the uh, solid um, uh, floating blood mist uh, explodes ah okay uh, as it um, uh, sends a uh, uh, Sir Clovis's blood all over you. And uh, then uh, Bradshaw feels uh, something getting closer uh, from the south. And then it is Flamen's turn. And I'll turn off the fire with my bonus section. Um, same again for Flamen. Just Redding versus uh, enemy bit. Uh, Plumman still can't hear or feel anything. Bradshaw. Okay. Um, hmm. Do I feel this thing is going to go? It's coming. Is un, coming underground? Is it? Or is it coming actually on the ground? Do I feel it's? Do I my? Give, I me, know give me an insight check. Uh, insight check. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, roll probably on the table. That's all right. Fifteen's kind of better than normal. Yeah, fifteen, Martin. Okay, so uh, to you, it feels as if every step this thing takes, the ground is uh, crying out in pain. As uh, it's so unnatural. Okay, guys, this is a big motherfucker. Oh, sorry, part the French. Um, and uh, and what you're feeling is it um, stepping um, towards you as each um, step it takes is about 40 feet. Uh, I look at, um, I think we're going to have to go three rounds with this tea set. I'd go to Flammer. And, <laughs> and you feel and it's about um, two miles away. And you're oh, feeling it away, from yeah. two miles. Oh, okay. Okay. Hmm. I will let it run. This big thing is coming for us, but it's two miles away. Do we want to make a run for it, or do we want to stand? Let's move and see if we can at least get away from where it thinks we are. If uh, as long as our divine friend here does not uh, invite more opposition by telling him where we are, hold all of that room and let's run. Okay, um, so it's coming from the south, and we're going north, aren't we? Aren't we? Aren't we? You are going aren't we? north, yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, if we're going the opposite direction, I'm more than keen to get on the Bruce and just and tell him, um, come on, Plowman. We, if it catches up to us, we'll kill it, okay? Then we'll have the tea party. So does Plowman um, mount um, the goat? Can't even get on the go. Don't uh, sorry. What's um? What's what's? Yeah. What's no? He doesn't actually. What's Bruce's speed? Oh, I don't know. I can even write that down. Slower um, than Plamen. That would be a good speed. Because I'm going to say that Plamen's going to run because he's probably quick. He's probably I, as quick. I would think that Plamen is potentially even quicker than the goat. <laughs> Though amusing, yeah. though amusingly enough, if you did happen to have a halfling with you, Plamen could have um, counted as a halfling's mount. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, how fast would it go? It was just normal horse speed. I don't know, man, because I didn't, didn't no, think about writing that down. He, he goes about the, as fast okay. as a um, draft horse. Oh, so that's so that's, just, uh, that's forty feet, I think. Yeah, it's faster than uh, Bradshaw. I'll be honest about it. It is. Um, um, yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. But it's also exactly as fast as Plum. Yeah, okay. Cool. Work counters large. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Versus now. Okay. 
a, a giant goat, a large beast, and can speed to 40 feet. Okay, thank you. Let's see if I can bring up the um, swollen goat picture for um, Bart Cat, and then see how big Bruce is. But, yeah. Um, but no, so I'll get on Bruce and I suggest everyone get going as much as I can. Um, if I need to. No, I'm not going to offer Dimitri. I couldn't bother doing that. Um, but, uh, I'll offer everyone in the party if they want to lift. Everyone got Dimitri, okay? So, but, That's um, all right. I'm if you're going at yeah. 40 feet, you can move 80 feet around. Dimitri can move 90 feet around. That's fine. That's okay. So, all I'm if saying, you kids don't settle down, I'll just summon my horse and leave you all behind. <laughs> That's it. Hey, <laughs> Dimitri, uh, don't mind that because you're going to a bright light going in the other direction or going away from us. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, I was actually thinking about that too. You can play a good distraction. Uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Six days, yeah. Let's just move as rapidly as we can. <laughs> we never know. We might reach, we might reach the border of the river where we can try and cross the river as well. Okay, yeah. so after about an hour of um, forced movement, everyone gets to make a who's moving gets to make a fortitude save, which means for um, the uh, our rider, um, he doesn't, but his horse does. His goat does. A constitution save, you said, Martin? Yeah, a constitution saving throw. So our griffin and our goat just to make a save, but their riders don't. The griffin has to make the save, but not the rider. Yeah. You're basically um, seeing if you're tiring out your mount where the others are running themselves, so they need to make a fortitude save. Con yeah, constitution save themselves. Yeah, would my constitution be the same as... the goat be the same as Bradshaw, or not? I'm happy to say that at the moment. Okay. So that's good. Um, hey, man, do you mind rolling for me? I'm just picking up my girlfriend from work. Sure, I'm happy to pick up the cursed dice. No, thanks. Uh, that's a 16 from me. Oh, get um, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy to roll. Bonus. You get me to roll? Okay. Yep. Dimitri got 18, and the roll for our commended knight is a 16 on the die, so... So he's good as well? Yep. Um... Um, well, Bruce got 21, so... Yep. And how did Plamen go? Oh, that's right, you rolled, we rolled for Plamen. Did, did we roll for Plamen? No, mm -hmm. hang on. Sorry, just give me two seconds. That's the thing. Uh, did you say constitution save? Yes, constitution saving throw. Uh, 21. 21, okay, well, after the first hour, you seem to be keeping up strong. Uh, and does, from, it, does it seem like we're still being chased after an hour? Uh, yes. And, and do we assess that the thing has gone uh, past where the original battle was? It has, yes. Hey Martin. Yep. Can I sub that sub that stat with uh, athletics? Sure. Cool. I'll wait for the next one. Okay, so uh, you can either use fortitude saving throw or athletics. So you're doing an endurance test. Uh, now it is uh, second hour running. Uh, do we have any idea as to how close we might be to the rapids at this point? Uh, you think you're probably another two hours away. Okay. Okay, as we're approaching the second hour, uh, to me, you've got to say that, um, well, does it feel like it's catching us in that time? Or uh, is it just staying in pace? At the moment, it seems to be pacing you. Mm. Uh, to me, will be encouraging the fact that, hey, it, 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 it could be one creature like it following us. One creature, as far as you can tell. Yeah. Um, um, Brad, Brad just says, is, just, think, just think big. That's all I want to say. Oh, yeah, no, no. Okay. I only got an eight. Dimitri, Dimitri is too well suspicious as to exactly what this thing might be. Um, but, yeah, it certainly, Dimitri's got the idea of, hey, if you look around for a, a, a more defensible spot, because... <laughs> We're not going to outrun this to the uh, to the rapids. 
uh, and it got, it's gone past the uh, uh, the original uh, activation point of the uh, the light source or the black light source. And I should probably still have a follower. I should also point out that my speed is actually 50 feet, mm -hmm. so I don't know if that helps in this kind of elongated test, given that Bradshaw is running at 25 feet. Bradshaw um, is on a um, mount going at 40, 40 feet, so you're, you're basically both all moving at a, at least 80 feet around. Alright, cool. And anyone going right. less than 80 feet around means that uh, you will have been caught by now. Alright. So with a twenty-five, um, Plumman would like to assist our uh, struggling friend. Well, your struggling friend is starting to show points of exhaustion. So Trellan is now exhausted. One. Uh, Bradshaw got a. Or Bruce got a seventeen. Okay. So Bruce is also at exhausted one. Yeah. Uh, do we? Do we still have a giant um, nerd is here for all of us? Uh, you do no. not. No, we shouldn't because he's got the, uh, the boot. Sorry, I thought it was um, the Griffin and him. So no, the Griffin and him. Yeah. Yeah, okay. all good. Not yet, anyway. So, we've, yeah, still, yeah. Got, we've, we've still got our own personal light courses. Oh, uh, yeah, the fact we go out to about. Sixty or so feet potentially, but yes, the uh, the giant uh, nerd nerd signal is not present. Though you do seem to be going past um, slow moving zombies as you're rushing. You have probably passed probably about two to three hundred zombies in the hour. And Are we passing zombies as we're walking along? Uh, no. They they had uh, started coming towards you since you did the divine magic. Right. Okay, so uh, after the so after the second hour, um, uh, you have uh, Trellon with exhausted one, and uh, you have. Our um, um, the goat we've exhausted one, and, and Dimitri also laboring, and um, Dimitri as well. Yep. So with exhausted one, uh, your uh, checks are at disadvantage. Can't Dimitri get a spectral horse? He can, but takes only ten, if minutes. For ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> and you really didn't think about that, huh? Well, yeah, it was the sort of thing that he was just about to do when someone decided to let off a divine bomb. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're now you're into your third era of pushing yourselves. You get to make another check. A disadvantage for those with the exhaustion, is that right? That is correct. And you are um, more than halfway there. Well. We're more than halfway to somewhere. We don't actually know whether we'll be affected there. <laughs> I got I got sixteen with disadvantage. Sixteen with disadvantage. I got a twenty as well, but that doesn't count. Cool. Um, I I almost managed the same thing, Mark. I got eighteen with disadvantage <laughs> because the other die was a natural twenty. With a twenty. <laughs> With a, with a 27, Plyman is going to look for anybody who So, and what did um, uh, Mark and uh, Sir Clovis get? Well, Bradshaw, not, not like Bruce, not Bradshaw, but I was 12. So, um, Bruce, Bruce looks really exhausted right now. So. But that's the exhausted too, I believe, Martin. It is. So, uh, so, so, the, so um, can we replace? Can we please replace um, uh, Bruce's stats 
with something along the lines of a draft horse, not Brute, not uh, Bradshaw's stats. We probably could. Well, Bradshaw's stats are probably better than a standard giant goat, which technically has a plus one constitution. Like I said, a draft horse. Brad, uh, Bradshaw's got a plus nine to his constitution check, so. Yeah, <laughs> a draft horse is not going to have that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll take that back. Jesus, you really <laughs> suck at rolling. Okay. Yeah, so, I draw disadvantage. Yeah. <laughs> so, so at this stage, uh, Dimitri, uh, Trullen, and uh, uh, Bruce the Goat are exhausted too and have slowed down to half speed. So 18 didn't actually get me through? DC went up each hour. <laughs> oh, okay. So, 18 would have succeeded at the second hour, but not the third. Right. So, in which case then, okay, if we've slowed down to half speed, it means we're not going to make the thing because it's been pacing us the whole way. So, uh, as the Dimitri suggested, we need to be looking for a defensible location. At, at this stage, you think if you push, you may make the uh, rapids as it reaches you. Um, Plumman says as a last resort he can summon Rajem to get you the hell out of here. They already know where we are. How do they know? Well, because the giant's following us. You can also see glowing footprints behind you. Of course, yes. The, the footprints stay there for at least an hour. Had been um, stated earlier. Can I, I mess? Can I mess around with the tracks to try to fool it a little bit? What are you going to use? Um, I'll just walk backwards, and um, okay. Yeah, I don't think we have time to worry about that kind of. Uh, unless we have something to actually remove the glowing footprint. If you had passed without trace, then yes, you would not be leaving any tracks. If you were floating, you would not be leaving any tracks. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, just like to double check. Like, I think we kind of egged out when we were being explained this, but anytime I cast a divine spell, it's bad, right? Like I'm gonna get hurt and I'm gonna attract you. You don't always take it's about damage. As bad as bad can be. But you, it does seem to uh, light a beacon to say where you are. So every divine spell will basically send send a beacon of saying divine person here while in this region. <laughs> Uh, the, the difference this time, it may not automatically bring down a blood swarm upon you to, kill, to, to eat you immediately, because as far as we're aware, we don't actually have the blood swarm hovering above us right now, which you did have before. Uh, um, Um, either way, there is a possibility that we can outpace this thing, so let's go. Okay, yeah. Well, okay, how many people are down at half speed? Three of you. Um, no, there is. Martin just said there is. Well, there's a chance we could make it in that way, but Dimitri yeah. will actually go for casting fly on himself and on... Uh, uh, Trillin and Trillin, on the goat. Yep. And apparently... Oh no, sorry, it's actually, it's actually the, uh, the griffin that's caused it, not uh, to play with, isn't it? No, it's Mark's um, steed. The griffin hasn't um, oh, come the, down the, yet. The goat, yeah. Uh, um, because I, I can't do anything about the goat. I rolled for sorry. Sir Clovis because I didn't hear from uh, Stephen, and on my rolls, it made the, uh, made the saves. Okay. Um, yeah, so the. Uh, at this stage, like a, the fly is only going to last 10 minutes, but he might give at least a slight breather for um, Dimitri and uh, Lou, uh, our, our monk. Um, Thank you. But more importantly, we're, we're moving a 60 point base at that moment for that, for that 10 minutes. So, yeah. Um, I'm going um, seven. Right. Ramen will basically do his best to scare the shit out of Bruce, not literally, please, for the love of God, um, and get him to move faster or continue at some sort of reasonable pace. Okay. So, what was, what was uh, 
um, Bradshaw's base speed for himself. <laughs> um, 25, I believe. Really like 20, or 20. 20, yeah. it's, um, 20 with armor. Technically, that's faster than Bruce right now. 25. Yeah. yeah. Faster than Bruce. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he doesn't want to give up on Bruce. But Bruce, well, might, be able to, Bruce might be able to run a bit faster if he isn't carrying a bloody heavy ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there is a very, very strong Yamaha Bruce Wayne in the Bruce Wayne family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bruce Wayne is a bit strong. Yeah, yeah. Bruce Wayne is a bit strong. Yeah, yeah. Bruce Wayne is a bit I'll, uh, if, if I feel that I would run faster than Bruce um, Martin, yep. I'll get off and, and we'll both play on myself while I'll push him. <laughs> I was going to say, in that case, Plyman will pick it up, uh, Bradshaw, and run with him. Okay. Okay. And that's still leaving Bruce behind. Maybe yeah, I'm pretty sure Bruce is going to be quick without that fat ass on him. Not quicker. He doesn't. He, he doesn't actually notice the weight. Oh really? Yeah, because he is a he's a proper mount. Uh, I'm sticking with no matter what happens, I have to stick with I'm sticking with Bruce. So, um, so I'm happy to take up the rear as I call it. So, so I know this thing is coming. Uh, where I'm from so. Bad choice of words for somebody with a go Frank. So, uh, Jeremy, hey, as you've hey, got a couple hey. of people flying, did you want to angle the flying people over the river now? Ten minutes should be enough to get you over the river. Oh, okay, so we don't have to go to the Ford, we can just go over the river. That certainly makes sense, and then we can keep going north and try and meet them at the Ford. Yep. At, the, at our slow, our slightly exhausted pace. So you get the exhausted uh, people over the river? Right, right, yeah, the exhausted people, but not the exhausted beast. Yep. Uh, okay. Those. Again, um, assuming that the river stops the. Giant beast. Anyway. Oh, no, no, for sure. But at least it actually gives a, a gap between. <laughs> Martin. Yep. yep. If at any point this giant guy is visible, Plumman will summon her shed. Okay. Okay. So as you, uh, the people who fly across the river, uh, do notice it seems to get a little clearer as you get across. It only seems to be. Uh, misty for about uh, 40 to 60 feet. It sort of shifts instead of um, 20 feet from you. Mm -hmm. So it's not as thick across the river. So again, obviously Bradshaw failed us by being too scared to even move a quarter of the way across the river. We could have saved the whole situation because we could have got across earlier. Yep. You like the old to make sure yeah. sure you know. Yeah, I was very lucky I was on mute there because I had a few swear words to you. Really. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how, um, how wide is, how wide is the river? At, at this point, it's probably about <laughs> half a mile. So about, I'd say about 500 feet. Yeah, gotcha. Because you're getting closer to where the rapids are and when it becomes rapids, it becomes probably about uh, 200 to 100 feet depending on the section you're at. Because you're okay, getting closer and closer to the um, start of the river. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm probably going to continue running towards the <laughs> rapid situation, but keep as close to the river as I possibly think I can okay. as I go through it. Um, and I assume Plowman is following me at the same time, trying to encourage my exhausted. <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, you get to have the goat gets to have its uh, disadvantage um, um, yeah. roll okay. as the rest of you who are running. Plumman will, use, Plumman will use every animal husbandry trick he knows in order to try and coat some energy enough with Bradshaw. In which, case, I, in, <laughs> in which case, I'll make it just a straight check, not a check with disadvantage. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, now dice, you do not fail me right now. And as your ev everyone else who's running also gets to make an exhaustion check. Which uh, I guess, the this, I, I, the I'm DC for this check is twenty two. I'm assuming that Skrellen and Dimitri, having got across the river, are basically walking <laughs> through the north. Yep. I reckon. Uh, yeah. Just we, take we, it easy. 
yeah, they can't. We, we will have pushed ourselves as far as we could anyway, so. Ooh, okay, okay, but, okay. But I, okay. What, what I did find amusing about uh, Plowman's plan there is that he was using every animal husband you think he possibly could to get Bradshaw to move faster. <laughs> I loved it. Ha! <laughs> well. <laughs> Which is why yeah, I gave him a, a bonus to his check. Yeah. I'll go a 21 run for Bruce, just let you know. Okay, so Bruce has hit exhausted three. And I'm rolling for Bradshaw now. Uh, Mark, I'm going to need you to find out how much uh, Bruce weighs, please. I will find that out. I'm using Indominable as a level 9 fighter to re-roll that one. Yep. Um, for Bradshaw. <laughs> Yeah, it's not, not the time you want to um, jump two levels of exhaustion. Oh, this is for Bradshaw, not for Bruce. So, yeah. um, but that's a 15 total, which is not uh, better than a 1. But I'm not sure how much good it's going to be. So 15 total. Uh, so you're, Brad, uh, Bradshaw. Bradshaw, Bradshaw gets 15. exhausted 1. Okay. Now I'm going to look up Goat's weight. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, how did Plumman go for his check? Uh, 25. No problem on your end. And how did uh, Sir Clovis's Griffin go? Uh, sorry, someone needs to roll for that. Okay, apparently um, you're doing well and succeeded again. Great. I'm assuming you've got at he least a plus apparently. three. <laughs> I'm assuming the die probably flashed. <laughs> I think well, the Griffin has a plus four or maybe a plus five for that. In which, in which case you had room to spare. Thank God. I, I, I've not rolled no, 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 anything. No, 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 no. Do not go around thanking God around here. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, so just put it in perspective. I think I've rolled a 19, a 17, and an 18 for um, your uh, Griffin while you've been away. Awesome. I should oh. do this more often. So yes, uh, as um, you reach the rapids, you can see um, lots of um, rocks across the water. Uh, it, it looks extremely um, hazardous, but uh, your dwarf can feel that the creature is almost upon you. Uh, each of you get, can feel what feels like a uh, rumble in the ground as it takes a step. Okay, so a giant goat approximately weighs about 170 pounds, according to what I read up on just then. So I'm not sure how accurate it is, Mark. Close enough. The monster, th the monster thing doesn't say, oh, the, the mouth thing says no weight on it, but I'm getting um, from other. Good news. Good news. Um, if that's the case, then um, uh, Plumman picks the goat up and uh, runs along with it. Okay, give me a um, athletics check as you bounce along the rapids crossing the river. Yeah, of course. Um, just so you know, that is just over half his carry capacity. Let me just bring up my dice roll. Uh, bueno. 25. Okay, you, you watch Plumman um, do parkour across the river. <laughs> you, you, now, even gonna, using the yeah. goat as part of his um, momentum. <laughs> Wait, now, Bradshaw's going to get across the river now, don't they? Uh, as does Sir Clovis. Clovis <laughs> will uh, get. Uh, David, could you go? Could you put yourself on mute for a moment? Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, go again, Steve. Uh. So Clovis will get his griffin to run and jump over the river while trying to also fly for a short duration while it's jumping. Okay, give me a um, uh, athletics roll for your griffin with disadvantage. Um, I'm still I'm, I'm like five minutes from home. Uh, in which case, then I shall roll on the uh, thing in front of you. For everyone else. Okay, so uh, your griffin does a leap, misses the first set of rocks, and goes splash right into the um, river. All right, all right. Um, 
what happens now? I'm in full plate. I mean, I'm sure my griffin can scramble out. It's a large creature. Uh, you're strapped on top of your griffin. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, currently, your griffin is uh, trying to scramble across the river. Give, it would then have to make another athletics roll to try to cross. Um, Plumman, if, if Plumman's able, he will try to assist. Especially using the butt of his blade. Okay, so, I will give you advantage on your griffin trying to get across the river after he's... Uh, so apparently with um, a couple of uh, moves from the masterful horse master he's managed to make a griffin and a goat get across the river uh, rel relatively unharmed but there is a Seclovis looking with bewilderment as he's now sitting on the other side of the um, uh, riverbank not knowing how he got there because he last remembered going under the river. Right. Everything exactly. else was a blur. Right, okay. He's like, uh, thinking like, uh, covered in blood and shit. Ugh. And now, yeah. and Plum at the... Plum is, sorry. So, that's both of you across the river with Sir Bradshaw behind. Okay. As he right. feels, as he sees the um, creature that's been following you um, slowly materialize out of the fog. Looking like that. Oh, yeah, it looks like a Stranger Things thing. Um, <laughs> so okay. basically, uh, so no. just from, from after using the glaive as a uh, stick for the thing to grab, Plum will turn around and reach out the part of his glaive for the Stranger again. Unfortunately, at this stage, you're across the. This is your um. You've gotten two people across the river. You're on the other side of the river as this happens. So, what does Bradshaw um, do? Bradshaw wants to get across the river right now. Okay. So, so. Uh, athletics? Um, what? Yeah, no, no, it's just reaching out, so he has to just to sit on. So, is it athletics one, sorry? Uh, athletics, yes. My band, um, normal role, or just band, or anything like that? Uh, your armor, does that provide disadvantage for some of those things? Oh, I think it's mithril, so I think it does. In which um, case, then, no. You can just um, roll normally. You don't have advantage, yeah, you don't have disadvantage. Yeah, I don't have advantage in constitution, right? I'll just read on my armor. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll just read on my armor. Okay, um, yeah, okay, so just one athletic roll. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Okay, here we go. Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay, you go bouncing across the stones and um, grab onto the um, glaive as you reach the other side of the river um, and find yourself resting, looking at, um, uh, at as you were going, this thing following your tracks, and um, that's the last you saw of it as you left. It was probably the uh, thing that made your nightmares look like they were fluffy kittens. Oh, I'm afraid it was like fluffy kittens, so it's okay, yeah. So, um, wh whatever you think of as your character's worst nightmare, it made that pleasant. My wife getting angry. Yeah. Okay, so it makes your wife getting angry feel as if, a if it's a light breeze. Oh, oh no, that's pretty bad. I'm not, she, when she's cranky, she just she kills a whole inn, okay? So, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, I'll try to comfort Bruce after the D6. He's not used to doing this much running. It's too, too much for a go. Okay, though you also have taken, um, need to give me a constitution saving throw. Okay. Because you'll have I taken some damage before you left its re area of effect. It has an aura. Okay, is it, it necromatic order? Or? It is a necromatic aura. Okay, because I've got resistance on that one, so... Uh, 27 on Constitution. Okay, so with your resistance, you... Okay, you feel as if it's trying to suck the life from you as you were leaving its base. It was trying to suck everything that made um, happiness possible. But you held on to it as you ran across the river. And one thing you did notice as you were running across the river, there were no footprints. Hmm. 
The footprints are only on the other side of the river where it stopped. It's no longer moving. I feel like I would have taunted, but I know that's a bad thing to do in your games, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just glad to be on the other side of that rear end. And Bruce okay. is currently on his side, panting um, rather badly, but happily um, licks your armor. I get another apple out, Sam. Here's an apple. Just relax for a bit. Get, get my little water skin out of my mat and bag of holding and just, you know, try to... Um, this poor goat's done too much running for one day. It's a goat, come on. It doesn't do running. It just, you know, plods along. So, uh, I, I, I look at everyone going, can we just have a rest for a second, please? We should probably set some watches. But I don't think that we're back with them yet. Can anyone do any healing on Sir Clovis? He's a uh, pretty, pretty rough. They can't, rem they can't remove really. the um, 16 reduction to your um, hit points at this stage. Yeah, but even so, I'm still pretty roughed up without, even without that consideration. Um, I can help, but I'm... Is there still red mist around right now? Uh, there is, but it's not as thick. Well, I will just really hate doing this. I'll go to Dimitri. He's not, not there yet. Isn't he? No, okay. no we crossed the river an hour ago uh, and then started walking. And then we were dawdling. Okay, okay. okay. So I, I, I talked to um, the, so, so Clevius, is that right? Oh, sorry. Clevius. Clevius, sorry, man. Um, I say, look, I got this um, potion of healing, greater, but I really, based on your efforts of divine magic before, I want to hold out to, we get some expertise in these matters first, because... I don't want to start inviting more things to follow us because I think once is enough in a three hour period. People so, can take a short rest and spend hit dice to recover. Yep, yeah, we can do that. So that's, a, that's an option I was thinking as well. So, so we can uh, do. Uh, okay, assuming you guys are just waiting at, at the board and not yep. going any further, then yeah, it would be appropriate for you to have a short rest by the time that Dimitri and Trellin catch up to you. Okay, so how many hit points after a short rest um, does Sir Clovis have? Um, half, during half that short dice. rest, you notice the plumman stands sentinel looking and looking and watching for enemies the entire time. He doesn't have his usual bullshit. He uh, he's very very attentive and protective of you all. So where is this big guy? This big. I explained what I saw. I try to do as much as fragile details. So I don't expect anything. <laughs> um, so I'll explain that. It's like I don't know, it's. Give me a religion roll for Bradshaw. Religion? Yep. Religion. <laughs> Minus one. Here we go. I know. Don't, don't dwarves, know. dwarves know all that, don't they? We, we don't believe in them. Um, hey, that's one of my better dice rolls for the night. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. He starts describing something that looks like um, uh, inky tar walking... Uh, at about the um, size of a uh, colossal beast coming towards him. Okay. Uh, that just looking into it feels as if your um, hope, your caring, your uh, love of life is just leaching away from you. Yeah, I explained so, trying to... You go ahead. Where, yeah. Where's it going? Like, and it was following your is tracks. It, is it just staying on the other side of the river? Um, yes, like I felt it kind of trying to grab my life force, if you want to call, or my, my dwarfness, I'm going to call it, um, and, but due to my strong dwarfness, it couldn't grab it, um, but I, once I got across the river, I didn't feel it anymore, so I As think... As opposed to your strong eyesight? You're not there, Dimitri, go away. Um, well, so, but if you're talking to Callum... Yeah, at this stage, Trellin, um, you, I'd say you have spent an hour resting, so... You, you've had a short rest, we've, so you've done... We've you, come you, up together, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yep, so, you've had yep, a short so, rest, so you've rolled your dice for any hit points. That's why I was asking what people's hit points totals are now. I can, well, I mean, I, I, I'm fine, but the exhaustion is the problem. Yeah, same, I say, same with Bruce, and I think I was one, and then... 
Bruce was three or something. So exhaustion, but I didn't take any damage. Exhaustion doesn't um, go down, unfortunately. And it particularly won't go down for us, Martin, because like the the Carolyn, because the uh, we we haven't actually stopped for a short rest yet. So. So if yeah. we do stop for, uh, I mean, for me, I I get the same effect as from a four hour rest. Um, as a long rest, so that takes down one level of exhaustion. But that's only if you uh, will be stopping the game at the point you catch up, because yeah. we are at the ten o'clock mark, and there will be something happening after that. So how many yeah, how many right. hit points does Clovis have after a short rest? Yeah, how, um, how many hit dice does he use? I well, I'll I had I think I had like minus. I took like 45 damage. I healed back 13 from uh, my second wind. And then um, on a short. Uh, so, but I'm down minus 16 max hit points anyway. Yep. So I can only heal up. So 16 plus 13 is like. 31 uh, damage, uh, which minus 16, meaning you got 15 you can heal. Yeah, so I need to heal 15. So I'm not sure how many hit dice I'd need to spend to safely do that, but I'd be happy to do that. Uh, two well, to you can three. Roll the dice by the time until you get there. Yeah. Okay. Could someone do that for me? Okay. Who would like to do that, Jeremy? What dice are you rolling? D10, I believe, for a fighter. Yep. First one is six. Do you get Constitution bonus on dice at all? I yeah, it's two. As as a. Uh, it's been a while since I've done the short rest, so I'm going to have a look, at, check it quickly. And, and also, what element are you? Do you get yeah. any effect of. Uh, being standing on the ground or anything like that. Well, if, I, if I'm in the, if I'm under open sky, I can, um, I get that that ability that I think every class gets. Uh, I mean, every yeah, everyone. You know, then gets. you get to roll the the thing twice. Yeah. yeah, I think, no, yeah I'm, I think for the first one only. Counters open sky for the purpose of fun. I will say yes because okay. that the, it's cloud, not um, um building. Not like this. Blood, blood mist will give him. I'll give him that bonus. Yep. Okay. So you get to roll two dice. And add the Constitution modifier to it. Yes. Okay. So on the first effective die roll, you've got a total of seven plus your Constitution modifier. And so I expect you use another die. Yeah. Until then, get you up to the fifteen. All right. Okay. Okay, so you're uh, down 16, but uh, hit, hit, hit points full otherwise. Which is good to All note right. down for next session. As so that gives us two hours to um, oh, well, that's catch the, up to these guys. Yeah, it's basically oh, no, no, one, one hour. hour. Okay, you, you can choose having, like, the, 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 if it's only one hour for a short mess, irrespective of having hit dice actually while. Yep. No worries. Okay, so yes, you uh, you catch up, you have a quick conversation, at which point you hear uh, sounds of um, fighting nearby. Mm. And we will finish it there for the night as you hear many people um, calling out in various languages. Can I, can I look at Plum and go, tea party? Yeah. You, you can. can. I'm going with that. And, we'll and the final line, the final line to the uh, session. It is time for the tick. <laughs> now that sounds like a lot like one of those Igors from the Pratchett novels. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you're playing the long con, uh, <laughs> but it's pretty good. Well, you did uh, manage gonna, to escape. Yeah, I'll start reading a, that green um, thing next week, and then I'm going to talk about Calamil. I'm going to, I'm going to hold line for at least three, six weeks on this one. Right so. Should keep you busy. So yes, uh, you now have to actually get through a war zone. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah, you've reached the war zone. So uh, I will, if anyone wants to chat to me afterwards, I'll put it on to end credits and uh, then chat to you.
See you guys, good game. Yeah, see you later.